Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my free training on Alien Skin Exposure X4. Please remember to share this video, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be processing a portrait using Exposure X4. I think you'll find that it's very easy to process portraiture using Exposure X4. Before we begin, if you could do me a favor, all of my videos are free, including this video series on Exposure X4. If you're enjoying the series and you're learning from it, if you could be kind enough to make a donation, I would really appreciate it. In the description below the video will be information on how you could make a donation and support my free videos. Now, we're going to be working on this image. This is a studio shot, so there's really not a lot of different like basic processing we have to do, but I do want to do a little. She has some hot spots on her face, so I want to rein those in a bit. So I'm going to go to the white slider, and I'm going to just kind of pull that down to bring those shiny uh, high key spots off her skin. You could go to highlights as well, but highlights tends to show too much like poor detail and blemish detail. And I'd rather not move that uh, slider. Now, I think the other sliders are okay. Uh, clarity, vibrance, and saturation. I'm probably going to be doing something else to help with saturation and clarity and whatnot. So I'm not going to move those, but I could come back here and uh, move these if I need to. I am going to warm it up a bit. So I'm going to go to the temp slider, and I'm just going to move that a little bit to the right just to give her a bit of a tan. So I think that looks good right there. So I'm really done as far as the basic processing is concerned. As a matter of fact, I think I'll just rein that in just a touch. Now, of course, if you're not shooting in a studio situation, you may have to do more processing here. But very basic processing, nothing out of the ordinary. Now, I'm going to do a number of steps uh, to process her skin, her teeth, her eyes, and so on. I'm going to go in a specific order, but you really could go in any order you like, whatever is comfortable for you. Personally, I like to do blemishes next, and I like to put that on its own layer. As a matter of fact, I like to put all these adjustments on their own layer. That way, if I need to come back and readjust something, it's really much easier to go to that specific layer and do the adjustment or readjustment as needed. Now I'm going to add a layer. I'm going to click right here. I'm going to call this layer blemishes. And then I'm going to use the spot removal tool. So we're going to go right here where this little band-aid is and click there, the spot heal tool. And I'm going to leave the feathering at 50 and the opacity at 100. And I'm going to get a brush that is just a little bit bigger than the blemish. You could use the right bracket key to make the brush larger, left bracket key smaller. If you have a center click wheel on your mouse, you could move that up and down or, you know, turn that. Or if you have an Apple Magic Mouse, you could drag your finger across it and resize the brush as well. And of course, there's this slider here. So we're just going to get a brush that's a, where the center circle is a little bigger than our blemish. And we're going to come in and pop these blemishes away. Now, typically, I don't like to uh, remove any moles scars those are tend to be permanent unless my um my client specifically says they want like a scar removed or something like that and then i'll do it but here we could just come through and very quickly uh remove some blemishes now of course i do the neck and chest as well but for the sake of this video in time i'm just going to do her face so anything below her chin i'm going to ignore she has some larger pores too so we'll get rid of those Let's go very quickly. If you don't like where it's sampled, you could move it to a different spot, uh, just like that. So if you click and you don't like where it's sampled, you could just drag it around and put it to a different area, and like that. So I think that looks pretty good. So we'll leave it at that. So I'm done with blemishes. Next, I like to soften skin. Now, there is an actual specific tool to soften skin. To use it, go to the brush and make sure you're doing it on a new layer if you're like me and want to put all these adjustments on their own layer. And what you're going to do is go to the drop down and down here to soften skin. 
And when you do that, because we had new layer checked, it added a new layer and it put a black masks. So nothing is being adjusted right now. And you'll notice, those of you not familiar with Alien Skin Exposure X4, that the brush tool just has size, feather, and flow. And there isn't any really adjustments, like what are we doing? Well, those are down here now. Since we're on this layer and we have the brush active, whatever uh, tab is active down here is going to be applied with each brush stroke. And in the case of softened skin, it's focus. So if I open up focus, you'll see opacity is at 100, radius is at 30. So every time I do a brush stroke, it will uh, you know, apply that amount of blur. Now, you have to be careful because if you have flow at, let's say, 100, and you come in here, I'm just going to get a big brush just to show you and come in, you could see that that is not acceptable, right? Way too much. So I'm going to undo it by hitting Command-Z. <clears throat> Now, what you could do is a couple things. You could either just kind of brush it in heavy, then readjust it with the opacity slider, meaning come in here and brush it in heavy, then come down here with this opacity slider and pull it back. And so it looks better. You could see how it's affecting that. Another way to do it, and I think probably the better way to do it, in my opinion at least, and I'm just going to keep on doing that till that's gone, is to change the flow of your brush. So we're going to bring it down, and I would suggest for skin, bring it down to 20. Uh, no more than 20, maybe even a little less. Then get a brush that fits what you need, and you could again use the same tools to resize the brush, the bracket keys, the center mouse wheel. Then come in and just go where it needs. Now, every time you brush over an area, it's going to double up on the brush. So what you want to do is try to not go over a spot too much. Meaning, let's go on her chest to show. If I go right here, one brush stroke, that's 20. Then I'm doubling it up. And I, if I keep going, I'll eventually get to 100 by just keep dragging on it. So I kind of have this big blur mark there. So that's not preferable. So what you want to do is just be careful and come in, especially with your first pass. Not Try not to go over anywhere uh, over and over. Now you could show the mask, click here, and it will give you a red overlay. And you could barely see it when you're at 20 on flow. As you go darker, you could see down here it's a little more obvious because I kept going over that over and over and over. So that red is a little more uh, prominent down there. Now what you'll do is, especially with your first time, is just kind of go over the spots, the entire face, like once. Then wherever there's some problem spots, here we're going to turn mask off for a moment. Wherever there's some problem spots, you could go over that a second time. So she like her eyes a little bit here, these uh, bags under her eyes. Let's soften those. So we'll come in and soften those. So I'll come in with a little extra. So we're kind of doubling up on that. I don't think I did under her eyebrow. Now what you want to do is avoid her hair, avoid her eyebrows, avo avoid her eyelashes. You don't want those softened. And avoid her lips. You want all of those to be very sharp. So you come in and again, you just kind of go very carefully. Now I'll turn this off. There's before. And there's after. So you could see it, it really just kind of blurs the skin. So, And why I like having it on its own layer is because then I could come in and if I really overdid it, I'll just delete this layer and start over. And I won't lose the blemish adjustments. I won't lose any other adjustments. I just have that. Now you could see on the mask itself right here that I have that part where I painted very uh, rigorously down here. If I want to undo that, um, what we could do is click on, I'm sorry, click on eraser. And then we'll get our bigger brush. And we could put a uh, flow at 100 for the eraser. And then I could just undo what I did there. Let's see. And we'll go back to our A brush, which is on 20. And I think that's good for this demonstration. So you get the idea how we soften skin. Next, I'd like to whiten teeth. Now, to do that, 
we have a special brush for that. We'll click right here and we'll go to whiten teeth. And again, just make sure that on a new layer is checked. So when we go to whiten teeth, we'll get a new layer and you can see it wrote soften skin and it wrote whiten teeth. Now for whiten teeth, what control does it use? Well, it uses, it goes to the basic tab and it turns exposure up and brings saturation down. Now for this adjustment, um, if you have, you could do one, either way I found works well. You could have flow at 100 and come in here and you just want to paint on the teeth and you could see how that's ridiculously too white, right? Could zoom in by hitting Command or Control Plus. Command Plus if you have a Mac, Control Plus if you have a PC. And you could come in and just paint on each of those teeth. Now you want to avoid, of course, the gums and the lips. And you could see how I went over. And then I could go to the Erase brush. And I could come back in here and erase that adjustment from those areas where I kind of screwed up. Doing a very poor job. Anyway, what you could do once you do that is with when you had flow at 100, just go to exposure usually and you can just kind of blend it in a little better. You don't need that much exposure is what I'm saying. So you could come in and of course with the eraser uh, that I'm on, I'm going to bring feathering down a little bit and just come in here and erase it from her, her gums. It kind of looks silly that make sure I'm not on anything but her teeth I'm going to zoom back out by hitting command minus and I think that you could then turn uh, the basic adjustment off and on just to see a before and after there's before and there's after and I think that looks fairly natural right there of course you didn't have to uh, paint with a flow of 100 on this you again could pull it down to like 20 and just kind of cumulatively add it on with each brush stroke. But I think that looks okay. So we have whitened skin uh, done. Now I want to do something with her eyes. So we're going to make sure we're going to be on a new layer. We're going to click here and we're going to go to enhance iris. So you could see it says enhance iris. I'm going to zoom in by hitting command plus. And then again, um, I'm going to leave a uh, flow all the way up And the adjustment for enhance Irish is again in the basic tab. It has exposure and clarity up saturation way up. So we'll come in and we could readjust those if we need to. So we'll come in here and paint in an enhanced Iris. Of course I went too far. A little shortcut. If you want to jump to the erase tool, hold the alt or option key. Alt if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac, and you'll automatically just switch to the eraser as long as you hold that Alt or Option key in. Then you could come in and fix any mistake you made. Not doing a very good job on my, on my video. Probably not caffeinated enough right now to do this properly. Or maybe I'm overly ca over caffeinated. Either way. You get the idea. We'll come in here and enhance her eyes. Now I'm going to zoom back out by hitting Command minus. You can see that that looks not good. So what we're going to do is go to that basic tab and we're going to pull exposure back down. We don't want her to look like she has alien eyes, right? Just want them enhanced. So there's before and there's after. It's as though we had more of a light source uh, in her eyes. So I think that looks pretty good. Now again, I'm just doing her face. I'm ignoring her neck and chest. But typically you would soften down there as well and do any blemish removals that you need to do. So I think we're good so far. Now, often we like to then sharpen the hair, sharpen the eyebrows, and sharpen the lips. So to do that, we're going to use another brush. So we're going to go right here and we're going to go to Clarity right here. And as soon as we do that, we have this uh, layer with clarity. And I could rename it. It don't ha doesn't have to be clarity, but I'm going to say sharpen. Oops, if I knew how to spell sharpen. Sharpen. That's just sharpen. It's good enough, right? 
And then what we're going to do now with that, we if we look down here in the basic tab, you can see it just has clarity, like up to 80. And what we're going to do is get a larger brush and just kind of brush through her hair like that. And then I'm going to resize it, get a smaller brush, and we'll come on her eyebrows like that. I could then do her eye lashes. That looks horrible. So we're going to undo that. Probably can't really get a small enough brush to get in there. But we'll do her lips. You can see now it's kind of overdoing it, right? And again, you may find that you'll need to do the lips on their own layer, the hair on its own layer, the eyebrows on her own layer. I'm just doing to save time mainly. Um, also, I have flow at 100, as you could see, but I'll go to the basic tab and I'm going to then tone down, bring down clarity a little bit. You can see that it still affects the adjustment. We just want it a little sharp. We don't want it goofy, crazy sharp like that. Now, what I like to do is I like to often add highlights uh, to a person's hair. So I'm going to go with the brush again and I'm going to go to here and I am going to go to, um, they don't have, I thought they did actually, but they don't have an actual adjustment for, uh, like, you know, adding a highlight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, go to neutral. So it added this adjustment called neutral and I'm going to call it a uh, highlights. And then I'm going to go down to the basic tab and I'm just going to bring exposure up a little bit. All right. And then I'm going to get a little bit of a larger brush and I want uh, feathering all the way up for this adjustment. And just come in here and add some kind of streaks to her hair that look natural like that. I also then could come in here if I want to and um, add some saturation as well. Not like that though. Make it look more natural like that. Like that. I think that looks pretty good. And that of course is, you know, optional. You don't have to do that. But that I think is really our adjustments. Uh, very easy to do. Uh, there's before. There's after, before, after. So you could see we did quite a bit. Um, the main thing with portrait retouching is you don't want the skin to look plastic. You don't want it to look so fake. I probably overdid this one for demonstration purposes because I really wanted to make sure you could see the adjustments I was doing. So this to me, for my processing is a bit overdone, but you get the idea. There's before, there's after. And there's kind of, my brush strokes weren't very good down here. We kind of work those. They didn't look natural, but that looks pretty good right there. So again, there's before, there's after, and you can see how everything's on its own layer. So if I think, you know, if I come back to this and I go, wow, you know, I overdid the eyes, just come back in and click on that adjustment. And then you could come in with um, the slider, like for the eyes, and you could readjust it, you could see. You could readjust that adjustment. Just click on the mask for the adjustment you want to do, and you're good to go. So it's it's very easy to use uh, Alien Skin Exposure X4 to process a portrait. And I think once you get used to it, you could go very, very quickly. Now, one thing I didn't do, I should add real quick, I just didn't do it because of time, is uh, there are some stray hairs here. You would use the spot removal tool for that. Now, it's a little more difficult, though, uh, just you know, that you'd go to the spot removal tool and then you'd have to come in with a, get a tool that's it's just a little bigger than the hair and go up like that. And it's going to try to pick a place and it looks pretty good right there. Kind of did a good job actually on that stray hair. So you get the idea with stray hairs just like that. And that's it. That's everything you need to know on how to process a portrait using Exposure X4.
Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and share this video. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, visit my website, onlinephotographytraining.com. There you'll find thousands of totally free videos and articles to help you with your photography.